Hi everybody, TaxMax here. Thanks for joining me for another video. I recently did a video on the LCP Max. I just purchased this pistol and put some rounds through it. Had a good old time doing it. Shot very, very well. So I wanted to do a comparison uh, to two specific pistols. This is the uh, CAR P380. It's also very similar. Not identical, but almost identical to the uh, CAR CW380. Uh, 380 a very small pocket pistol i've been using it for some time and it does seem now that the lcp max has become my primary carry as far as pocket carry goes but i also wanted to kind of see how well i shot them all so i was going to compare them to each other and see how they go and then i was able to get my hands on a ruger lcp this one uh, belongs to a close friend of mine and let me show you how he gave it to me because i thought this was relatively funny you see i know my buddy had an lcp so i decided to ask him if i could borrow it so i could compare it to my Ruger LCP Max, and you know, of course he said no problem. So when I met up with him, he handed me this, a plastic baggie with this pistol and magazine. Luckily empty, uh, no, it was completely safe. I just thought it kind of funny that he had it in a plastic bag like this. Uh, a, it makes it look like a piece of evidence. Uh, and B, I, I'm not a scientist, so let me qualify this, but I don't think you need to put a pistol in a plastic bag to keep it fresh. Um, <laughs> now, if you're doing it uh, to ziplocking it to keep it dry or away from moisture, I'd recommend throwing a silica gel pack inside of there so if you do have any moisture trapped in the bag, it won't condense onto the pistol. So we will have the LCP to take to the range and compare on all three of these pistols. Now, size-wise, obviously, they're all a little bit different. The smallest one is going to be the car. It is technically the smallest one here. The lightest one is the LCP. And all of them have slightly different grip angles. Now, I could put them on here and put the camera on top so you could look at them. But there is a great website called handgunhero.com. So it's as one word, handgun hero. And it allows you to actually compare lots of different types of pistols, size, weights. And they'll actually have a graphic where you can place them on top of each other and measure them and to see any sorts of size differences. But at the end of the day, like I said, smallest and lightest. But of course, it has the largest capacity. Now, when my buddy lent me his Ruger uh, LCP, it came with this flush magazine. I don't know if he had one with a finger extension. If I remember, I think I had to add the finger extensions. I'm not sure they came with these originally. But see, let's check it here. It's completely empty. So I have no finger extension specifically for the LCP. So I think first off, when I compare them, I'll compare them all uh, with, you know, because all of these have. And let's let's check, check them all for safety. So... Completely empty there. So this is the flesh magazine that came with the car. And then as far as the Max, this is the flesh magazine that came with the Max. So when I take them to the range, I'll first compare them all with the flush magazines. And then at some point, at least for the uh, car and the LCP Max, I also have the magazines that have a bit of a finger extension, uh, which I like a lot. It helps me control the pistol better without making the magazine too large for pocket carry. And then both the Max and the car also have the offerings of an extended pistol uh, magazine that have the larger extension on there. So on the car pistol, once again, let's check it here. Um, you can see that really helps you grip it with pretty much your whole hand. Um, and the same thing with the LCP Max. Uh, with uh, You can see I can barely touch it with my pinky when I have the flush magazine. But if I take that out, and put in the large magazine, pretty much hold it with my hold hand. I mean, a the, the little bit of my pinky is off of it, but not enough to make a big difference. So we'll try those as well when we're comparing the car and the LCP Max. I think at that point it'll be a little unfair of a comparison to the LCP since I don't have an extended magazine for it. Now, one of the things I want to show right now real quickly is uh, trigger pull and reset. So let's do those one at a time. So here's the, the car. So with the car let's see it's got a pretty long trigger and it breaks let's see how big the how quick is the reset pretty far out there it is <laughs> you can hear it but it's a pretty big reset now once you get that reset it's very little slack and then it, it, it is a bit of travel it has to do to break let's check the lcp so once again see it's completely empty so not as much travel no it's still a good amount of travel oh there it breaks pretty far in let's see what the reset's like 
oh, much faster reset. You could hear it there as well. And then at that point, there's almost no slack. A little bit of travel. Oh, it doesn't want to fire. Let me try that again. That may have not been the right reset. So let's try it resetting it one more time. See, I think that's the reset, but I can't pull it. So it has to go a little bit more than that. There's the reset. Okay, that's strange. Uh, I don't know if any of you have experienced that, but it's it almost felt like there was a reset there pretty soon on, but apparently not. Um, and then, yeah, there's a little bit of travel. And then it breaks. Let's try that again. So you hear that click, but that's not the reset, apparently. That's the reset. <laughs> bit of travel and brake. So really, I would think the car has a slightly better trigger than that. And I assume that's why they have the LCP2, uh, since it has a different trigger on there. So now with the LCP Max, it has the uh, uh, different style uh, trigger. It has the Glock style uh, little trigger safety device there. And then pull it in. Almost no travel. So I'm going to show you from the beginning again, because... I mean, that's a little bit of travel. You put your weight on, and at, at that point, wow, it just breaks. That's really nice. And the reset. Yeah, that's great. The reset's real short. Well, yeah, relatively. Compared to the other two plastic uh, pocket pistols, you can't hear it as, uh, as much. Audio, it's not as noticeable. It doesn't have as loud of a ping when it does reset. But once it resets, no travel, and just breaks. So, yeah, the Max really has... The best trigger of all three and i assume that's probably so similar to what the lcp2 is like um now let's check trigger weights here we have the wheeler trigger gauge here uh we'll do the same order start with the car see it's empty we'll do three tests and take the average there oh. Three pounds, 11 ounces. Okay. Enter. Try that again. Four pound, 13.6 ounces. Enter. One more time. Oh, four pounds, no ounces. I'm going to do one more. It's just that one felt like it slipped a little bit. I'm going to delete that one and not make it part of the average. So let's try it one more time. There we go. Uh, four pounds, two point nine ounces. Oh, uh, so that was uh, that was pretty accurate. So we're at four point. Uh, excuse me, four pounds, three point nine ounces on average. So that's good. That's not bad of a trigger. Now let's take a look at the LCP. So we'll clear this all out and starting over again. Five pounds, 10 ounces. So we'll enter that. Five pounds, 15.5 ounces, so 15 and a half ounces. Enter it, and one more time. Five pounds, 8.5 ounces. We'll enter that. So this one had an average of five pounds, 11.4 ounces. So yeah, the car is definitely a better trigger than that. And let us try the max. Okay, five pounds, 11.6 ounces. Six pounds, 14 ounces. Four pounds, nine ounces. I think I may have just put it a little too high up on the trigger the first time around, but we're going to go ahead and enter that. We'll do one more here. There we go. Yeah, four pound, 14 ounces. So I think the first one was a little bit heavy. I think I, I tested it a little bit high up the trigger. So this one, this saying it's uh, average is over five pounds. I really think it's closer to four, four pounds. Um, just, well, almost five pounds. This is four pounds, 14.9 ounces. Let's try one more time. Three pounds, 15 ounces. Yeah. So it really is. I think the first couple of times I just wasn't testing it quite right. Here. 
five pounds, 10 ounces. Yeah, so not terribly consistent or I'm just not doing a good job of testing the trigger, but somewhere between four and five pounds. Uh, although it feels better and it seems to uh, break cleaner and reset faster. Um, as far as sights goes, then yeah, this it's hands down with the Max. I mean, you've got this uh, U-notch in the front. You got this tritium night sight in the front with a white ring around. It's real easy to see. Um, this LCP is very similar to my uh, Keltec P3AT. Uh, just a kind of a small little notch in the front and a, barely even a bump in the front. So not great sights. The car, on the other hand, has okay sights it's got uh, a small notch on the back and it's got a uh, kind of it's a post and dot style sight uh which i got very used to when i started shooting sigs but the front sight is much taller and it's a little easier to line up so as far as comparison goes i think i'd give uh top sights to the max second to the car and third to the lcp but that's another reason they made the lcp2 the lcp2 has much better sights on it than the standard lcp so we're going to take them to the range put some rounds through all of them see how well i can uh you know uh group or how good my groups are probably somewhere between five and seven yards maybe we'll put it out to 10 yards at some point one of the things I want to check is limp wristing. Uh, for those of you that watched the video when I broke in this pistol, those were literally the first rounds I fired through this thing. And I fired 20 rounds through it of uh, once of Winchester bulk box and then one of uh, a cheaper Federal target ammo and it shot fine. Then I tried to shoot it with one hand. And the first two rounds I shot with a single hand, the, the slide did not go all the way back into battery. It cycled, it ejected, and it loaded, but the slide did not go all the way back forward and I think I was limp wristing now I've been trying to research that a bit on the web and there's some people claiming you cannot limp wrist this pistol I I'm not sure that is correct <laughs> but that's what I'm going to try as well when I take all these out at some point I'll fire them all single-handed because that's somewhat important when it comes to pocket pistols many times you're going to draw and only be able to fire with one hand so I want to see how well I can hit with a single hand with all of these and when I'm shooting them with a single hand I'm going to try to take a couple of shots with each where I'm not gripping it too tight and I've kind of got my arm a little a little loose I, I don't lock it up and see if that affects cycling I mean that could have been that it was I mean Literally, that would have been round 21 and 22 through this, this pistol, and now it's had a few hundred through it. So that may have just been an issue of it being new and hadn't been cycled enough. Uh, but I want to know. I want to know if there's an issue with limp wristing with any of these three pistols. So anyway, let's go head out to the range and uh, have some fun. Here we are at the range, and let me apologize for my voice. I'm still a little hoarse from this cold. But here we have the LCP Max in the car with three magazines, the flush with the finger and the full extended. My friend, if you remember, uh, he gave it to me in that bag, so I ended up buying him a little pistol case to give him pis when I give his pistol back to him, and I got him the extended seven-round magazine just so I could compare it a little better with the LCP Max and the car. So hopefully he'll appreciate that. But we're going to start out shooting the flush magazine of all three at that target at five yards. So we're starting with the LCP. Flush magazine, and I'm going to end up aiming at the uh, top left target. You can see I had to readjust my hand with that small magazine because these are snappy little pistols. It's it's hard to just hold it with two fingers, so between shots I had to kind of. Shuffle my hand around a little bit to keep a good grip. And now the LCP Max with the flush magazine. Now even though it is a 10 round magazine, I only loaded 6 rounds if I remember correctly to just to try to match the other two pistols. You can see I'm firing it a little faster. I probably should have slowed down. Um, I'm hitting okay with it, but not as, not as good as I usually do when I practice with that pistol. And now the car and its flush mag. This is the P380. And on this one, I'm going to shoot at the top right target. With the LCP Max, I was shooting at the center target. Also able to shoot them a little faster than the LCP. But I have the most experience with that car. So the LCP, even with the terrible sights, I did relatively well. I got five of the shots, two or three on the orange, two right next to it, one low. The LCP Max, I... I 
was pulling down into the left. I think I was squeezing my grip a little bit. And then the car, I did relatively well. Just most of them there in the orange and a few right to the side. So all in all, at five yards, all of them did great. Now I'm going to shoot the LCP Max with the slight small finger extension. That's usually how I carry it. I find the extended magazine's just a little too big. And this one I shoot at the bottom left. You can see I'm not having to adjust my hands. Even with that small extra grip, it, it helps a lot. And now the car with the uh, grip with a small pinky extension as well. And this one I shoot at the bottom right. Once again, I don't have to readjust my hands. I'm able to get the shots off a little bit better. You know, these indoor ranges are really cool, but they are expensive, and obviously they're always filled with people, so it's hard to video. And uh, they only give you an hour, so I have to you know, kind of speed up my filming process here. But you can see with that small picking extension, both the LCP Max and the uh, Kelt, uh, excuse me, the Car P380, they, they did great. They both hit many more shots in the center. Now I'm going to shoot all three of them with the longest extension. So this is the LCP with the uh, seven round extended magazine. It's a new target up, again at five yards. I'm going to shoot at the top left target. You can see I'm not having to readjust my hand at all. That uh, that extension helps a lot. And it's not too much longer on the LCP, so I would definitely recommend it. Now the LCP Max with its 12-round uh, magazine with the big pink, pinky extension. Once again, I think I only load in seven rounds. And this time I'm shooting at the center target. Yep, seven rounds. Now the car with the seven round extension as well. I like that extension a lot, but unfortunately for the holster I have for it, when I put that longer extension, it just doesn't sit in my pocket very well. So I'm only able to use the uh, pinky extension. You'll see that I can shoot the guns a lot faster. I'm, I'm able to get my shots off faster and control the pistol more with those larger magazines. And let's take a look at the target. And once we look at the target, you can see that those finger extensions really help. On the LCP, it got uh, the rounds closer to center. With the LCP Max, same thing. And I pulled a couple there a little bit to the left, but nothing too severe. Uh, you know, we could see it. a lot of those rounds are touching each other. And the same thing with the Car P380. Much more control. And I probably shot it the best, but most likely because I, just, I have the most experience with it as far as more rounds down range, which is why I always recommend to practice with whatever you carry. It's very important that you get that muscle memory. You can hear me talking to the camera there. That's to remind me that now I'm doing the limp wristing test to see of I'm trying to hold that pistol mainly with my thumb and, and, and forefinger, my, my pinky and the two other fingers I'm, I'm keeping with very little pressure on the grip to see if it's going to cause any malfunction. And surprisingly so, on the LCP, it was fine. It fired every single round without a problem. Uh, it was, I had so little pressure on my fingers that it was actually uh, making my hand shake because I was putting all the pressure on the web of my thumb and my trigger finger holding that pistol. And now we try it with the LCP Max with uh, the pinky extension. Now at this point on the LCP Max, I'm, I'm just under 200 rounds, getting close to it. And with that first shot, as you can see there, it didn't go all the way back into battery. I have to just push it a little bit with my thumb, and it's ready to go. So it did cause a problem with that one shot. And that was it. After that, I fired every round uh, 
them bristing as much as possible. I have very little pressure on that grip, and it fired them without a problem. So it may just be a break-in issue. Uh, you know, typically I try to put 150, 200 rounds, at least 100 through a, through a pistol before carrying it, and uh, you know, so you can break it in. And now we're going to do it with the car. The P380, try to limp wrist it as well. See if there's any problems. And there was. It loaded the next round, but I couldn't pull the trigger. It took me a second to figure out that although the slide went far back enough to load the next round and to eject the round, it did not actuate the trigger enough to, to reset the trigger. So, and then another one round went fine, then the round after that didn't load back up. And then I think that was it, that may be the last round. It didn't lock back on the last round as well. So the LCP, the P380, does have a little issue with limp wristing. You have to be careful with that. Now I'm shooting the LCP Max. I'm going to do it one-handed as well uh, with that. Uh, but now I'm putting the fist up to remind myself that this time I'm going to hold it with a, t a regular grip. I'm just going to grip the pistol like I normally would grip to see if there's any issues. And as you can see, I can fire it a lot faster because I'm not trying to control the uh, <laughs> pistol with just two fingers and it shoots flawlessly. So if you have a good grip on the pistol, even with one hand, it, it functions. So now the car, same thing. I'm gonna hold it with one hand, but a strong grip to see if there's any issue with it. When I say strong grip, I just mean my typical grip that I would use. I don't squeeze any harder than I normally would. You can see I can get the rounds off a lot faster and cycles through every round without a problem. Now, I didn't do that with the LCP because the LCP didn't have any issues limp wristing. So I figured I was going to try the Max and car again a second time to see if there were any issues with limp wristing. And uh, once again, single hand, I'm gonna hold it very lightly with my other fingers, uh, with the magazine with a small pinky extension. So you can see how, you can see how much the gun is shaking in my hand because I'm barely holding on to it. And this time it fires fine. Didn't have any issues whatsoever. So now at this point, like I said, I'm hitting about the 200 round mark and that may have just broken it in. So limp wristing did not seem to be an issue with the Max the second time around. Now here we're going to do the P380. Once again, see if anything happens limp wristing. Trying to just relax my hand and just pull the trigger. Yeah, see that? Stove pipes. Stove pipes the round. I just knocked that round out. And now it's firing okay. That's the last round. Strangely, it didn't eject it. It's, it's halfway out of the chamber. But it, it cycled, it just didn't eject the last round. So once again, I would say that I would be careful with the max until you break it in and those cars as well with limp wristing until you get some rounds through them. Now here we move on to the slow-mo comparison of the uh, how snappy the pistols are. So. You can see here, well, the LCP, it, it pulls up a bit. It takes me a little, a little bit longer to get back down on target. You know, they are snappy little pistols. A 380 and a small pistol is going to snap back a bit. You, you need to pr practice with them. And now is the LCP Max. You can tell even the way the slide moves on the LCP Max that, you know, it's got more mass to it. And it doesn't snap up quite as much as the LCP. I'm able to get it back on target a little bit faster. And of course the sights, the sights help a lot. Once you get past five yards, those, these, oh, those LCP sights at least are very difficult to aim with. And then the car, and the car as well, I'm able to get it back on target a little bit faster. You can see it doesn't seem to snap back as much, but a lot of that has to do with the, the grip angles, because all three have different grip angles. But I'm able to get it back down and back on target relatively quickly. So in the end, I would recommend all three pistols. I mean, the LCP, LCP Max, and CAR P380 are, are great pocket pistols. 
But as with any self-defense pistol, take it to the range, put some rounds through it, no matter which one you own. They are snappy, but they are still fun to shoot, and it's important to practice, especially with these smaller, smaller pistols. As always, thanks for joining me, and I will be seeing you in the next video.